There's a small problem in making two characters or more talk in the 2.5 version of iClone. Described here is the easiest way of correcting it until version 3 comes along in March next year. It's assumed you would use an audio editor for creating your dialogue. Here I am using Audacity, which is free of charge. I created the dialogue for character 1 and character 2 first. And here is character 1 with enough silence at the end to cover the dialogue of character 2. Audacity is relatively easy to use and as I said before it's free of charge. Just Google for Audacity and you'll find where to download it. And here is the dialogue for character 2. I have added 13 and a half seconds of silence to cover the dialogue for character 1. Audacity has a facility where you can generate silence on your dialogue track. Now we're going to generate the lip movement for character 1. The sound will disappear as soon as we add the sound for character 2 in the next step and that's the nub of the problem. Double click on the character you wish to assign the dialogue to. Select animation and then facial animation. Go to modify on the right vocal import wave and find the folder where you have stored your dialogue track. Click save and it is then uploaded to iClone. It's processed by iClone and here's the result. Hi, my name is Osteo. Osteoporosis. And I've got a great diet for you. Go down to your nearest McDonald's. We'll repeat that for character 2. Select by double clicking on the character. Go to animation and then facial animation. Modify, vocal, import wave. Locate your track, save and here's the result again. Only this time character 1 is silent but the mouth is moving. Don't listen to him, unless you want to look like him. Keep off the Big Macs. Here's a video track, and here's the soundtrack on the timeline of the editing software Adobe Premiere. We'll just play this on the timeline. Don't listen to him unless you want to look like him. Now we'll repeat the procedure for the first character's dialogue file and we import it here like this. Select the file, open and now it's in the panel there and we put it on the timeline and you can see that the dialogue neatly fits with the second piece of dialogue. Hi. My name is Osteo. Osteoporosis. And I've got a great diet for you. Go down to your nearest McDonald's. Don't listen to him unless you want to look like him. Keep off the Big Macs. I apologize for the rubbish dialogue, by the way. Here's the finished product. Hi. My name is Osteo. Osteoporosis. And I've got a great diet for you. Go down to your nearest McDonald's. Don't listen to him unless you want to look like him. Keep off the Big Macs. They killed him. There is another method where you apply the combined dialogue tracks and apply them to a third character who you then make invisible. This is how it's done. Select character and go to control F7. Add the third character. There we go. And then you applied the combined dialogue track to the new character, character number three, and temporarily hide that character. And then just render it to Avi in the usual way. And it will just have the two characters speaking with a combined character. I don't see any advantage in this whatsoever. 
it's extremely fiddly to do the timing. If you're just half a second out and that can be easily done, you're going to get the lip sync wrong. There is another way using the chroma key method. It's a bit fiddly and it's unnecessary. Just apply the dialog to the first character, remove the second character and render the scene to Avi in the normal way. Now remove the first character, bring back character 2, remove the 3D background, go to 2D background and put in the green screen from the color palette and apply the dialog to character 2. Now render to AVI in the usual way. You've now got two AVI files each with a portion of dialog and the correct character on them. And you now have to merge them using chroma key in your editing software. This method is really a no-brainer but I suppose it works in its own way.